Hi there! Welcome! You might be wondering, where the hell have you been? Well, I've been kind of busy with certain things, but also with certain crap I have to deal with. Hi! Welcome! And I know what you read down there, and yes, this is the SCP vs. 40k Fights. You don't like it? There's the door. In all honesty, we've all had this debate and all this discussion and everything else in between. And this, there's literally a subreddit talking about it, and it's just like, we, 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 we have to talk about this. So yeah, this is the SCP vs. 40k, well, series. And yeah, I know it's a little weird, but I like it, and there was a lot of people that wanted to see certain fights go on. So yeah. Now, to break this down, what's going to happen is there's going to be three fights. The fights are going to happen as so. There's a 1v1 outside of the warp, 1v1 inside of the warp, and a 1v1 with army and minions. Now, when it comes to the power scaling, we're going to go off of strength, willpower, and also trickery. Basically, strength is overall power, agility, and everything else in between. This is basic stats, like strength, dexterity, and also constitution. With willpower, it's more of intelligence, wisdom, and also the strength of their own will to do what must be done. And trickery is basically the wild card, basically what they would do in order to win. Like, for instance, Zeech himself would have probably a 10 in Trickery, but Nurgle would only have like a 5. However, there is a fourth version, which is Minions, basically the power of, well, do they need Minions or do they not? So, with that being said, let's get into this, because the first fight we're going to go up against is going to be a doozy. Yeah, the first episode is going to be the big boys, the Scarlet King! Versus Core. Oh, before we begin though, warning. This is my opinion. This is not me saying that this is the true facts of the matter. This is my idea and my basis off of my research I've done over a week to figure out if Corn or the Scarlet King would win in a fight. Yeah, well, with that being said, we should probably get into this. Starting with the big boy himself. The man, the myth, the legend, the war man, the skull throne, and the blood god, Corn. With this, we need to go over Korn's pros and cons. Pros. This man is one of the strongest chaos gods. Literally, only Nurgle himself can actually go one-on-one -on -one with Korn and not be defeated. Zeech and Slanesh usually keep their distance, and the only other person besides Nurgle that made Korn question if he was going to win the fight was <laughs> the big man himself, the god emperor him of mankind. So... When it comes to strength, I would literally say that his strengths are this. Korn is one of the strongest and most powerful deities on the entire 40k universe. He has never really lost a fight. He's come close, but he's never really lost. He is malleable, though, even inside the warp. The reason being, it's basically, you know, Hive Swords logic from Destiny. The more people you defeat, the stronger you become. The stronger you become, the more easy it is to continuously win. Korn has beaten so many people into the oblivion that he is literally the god of war. Well, more or less. You see, that's a misconception that a lot of people have. Korn isn't the god of war, he's the god of battle and violence. However, he does have another side to him, which is where we're getting into his weaknesses. Korn, yeah. Korn, being him, will fight you one-on-one -on -one and will not stop until one of you is dead. However, he won't backstab, won't trick, won't be anything other than chivalrous. Why? Because he believes it's weak to be like that. That's why him and Zeech don't really get along and Nurgle and him are kind of on the fence. With that being said, Korn could beat a lot of people in a one-on-one -on -one fight. 
However, trickery is one of the mandatory ideas of this, and I gotta say, he's not looking good. But hey, that's just my opinion on this. However, let's get into his stats. When it comes to one of them, strength, he is above and beyond going up to 10. That man is just pure, unadulterated power. When it comes to willpower, though, he is at a 9. He has once in a while actually doubted himself and actually almost caused himself to lose a fight because he once was not tricked, but thought he was going to lose a fight if he ever fought this person on a certain day. When it comes to trickery, it's at a negative, in my opinion. It's a big old goose egg. Korn doesn't trick people. He doesn't have any, like, special talents or special abilities. It's literally just you, me, in the ring, we're gonna fight this out till one of us is dead. When it comes to his minions, it's actually not that bad. He's actually at a 5 out of 10. He does depend on them, and this is one of the biggest things about Korn. He needs his minions in order to win because, well, if they don't exist, they don't believe, and if there's no believers, well, Korn doesn't believe in himself anymore. Now, with that being said, that's Korn. What about the other guy? Well, let's get on to the Scarlet King, shall we? Hello, Ebrinian! <laughs> How are you? Why, thank you. Oh my god! The Scarlet King, the man, the myth, the legend, the god of devouring other gods. Quite literally. For those that don't know, the Scarlet King got his name because, well, he originally was nothingness, or literally the concept of nothingness. He was a god that was made from the Aether, uh, once the Big Bang happened. Him and his siblings basically coexisted till he came up with a terrifying thought. What happens when everything ends? Everything becomes nothing. So in his weird logic, he devoured his siblings in order to save them the pain of watching each other die. And that's where the joke, you know, the Scarlet King loves you, that's why he wants you to die, comes from with the SCP Foundation. It's just a joke on top of it, but it's it, it, it makes perfect sense to us. Well, with that being said, the Scarlet King actually is probably one of the most powerful entities in the world. He has been stopped, though, by Mechanus and a couple other deities from entering certain universes, and there has to be certain rituals in order for him to actually show up. That's where he is a little weak in that sense. However, he is charismatic as fuck, because that man can literally trick people into believing that he is their savior. Literally, there is cults and religions of the Scarlet King in multiple universes, to the point where it's quite scary, if at all, you could stop him. But there has been ways to defeat him and other ways to keep him at bay. And this is where it gets really funny. The Scarlet King is considerably one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful, deity in the SCP universe. However, he is a multi-dimensional being and the ones above him basically treat him like he's nothing more than a nuisance. <laughs> yeah, for those wondering, the Scarlet King is a like multi-dimensional being. But there are beings in the SCP universe that are multi-multi-dimensional beings. Like, there's multiverses of multiverses that these beings actually can witness. And the Scarlet King is currently at basically a regular power level, or at least an ascended power level. He's not as strong as most of them, but he does destroy universes by just literally stepping into them. So yeah, if that gives you a clarification on that. That being said, I will say this. Let's get down to his stats. When it comes down to it, the Scarlet King himself is a good powerhouse. In strength, he isn't as strong as Korn. I give him an 8.5 at the most. And that's with him going into a new universe fully repped and ready to go at it. Willpower is probably at a solid 9.5 to almost 10. This guy has the will to do whatever it takes in order to make sure that everybody is saved from the pain and suffering of death. I mean, to the point where he has literally sacrificed pieces of himself in order to destroy universes. That's the level of dedication this man has. When it comes to trickery, he is at a number fucking 10. 
That man literally tricked the universe into opening the door because they were facing a crisis, yet he was the one that made the crisis and tricked them into believing he was the only one to stop the crisis. That man is a master manipulator. When it comes to minions, it's actually at a low three. He really doesn't need anybody to help him. He actually is powerful on his own and can do whatever he wishes. He once even erased a concept just so that way he could enter a universe. It's amazing to that fact. So when it comes to minions, yes, there are multiple cults and religions based on him, but they just don't really mind him. He just does what he wants. I will say this, the Scarlet King, though, does have his breaks because... <laughs> I know somebody in the comments is going to go, but what about the UIU agent that tricked him because of the spork? Yeah, that's an actual event. Uh, long story short, the Scarlet King was tricked into believing that there was a spork of infinite interdimensionary power that could wipe out anything as long as the wielder wished it. And the UIU basically tricked him into believing that, and he never went back to that universe ever again. So, yeah. Now, let's get on to the main event, shall we? The main event is going to be this. I'm going to post it right here in front of you. It's 1v1 outside the warp, 1v1 inside the warp, and then the minions, the minions with the bosses backing them. Now, let's start. When it comes to outside of the warp, this would be a very interesting fight. I would say that Korn would probably have the lower chance of winning at the beginning, but after grinding him down, it would be very close. And I have to say, outside of the warp, I have to give it to the Scarlet King with a 7-3. to three. The Scarlet King has m wiped out universes and has literally been in the void his entire existence. Outside of the warp, it's not going to be pretty for Korn due to the fact that the Scarlet King has a lot of tricks up his sleeve, including manipulation and conjuration of dimensionary power. It's literally basically trying to fight against a, well, it's basically trying to fight against an invisible wall. Literally, Korn would succeed in defeating him three times after using almost all of his power, but the Scarlet King would come out ahead in the 1v1 outside the warp. Now, let's move on to minions. Now, this is where it's going to get interesting. When it comes to 1v1ing with minions, this is where it gets really fun. It can be in or out of the warp, it doesn't matter, because this is more of a battle of attrition. And I have got to say, the Scarlet King gets his shit rocked very well. Because the simple truth is, the Scarlet King never really needed minions. He often just manipulated certain people to do his bidding. He never once really gave a shit about the collective of minions, and most of them are nothing more than regular humans. Versus Corn who has an entire arsenal of just straight-up monsters that take on Space Marines in a 1v1 on the regular. It's not a joke when I say the Scarlet King's gonna hold out, but he's getting his shit rocked in this via 6-4. to four. I will say four times Scarlet King does win, but the fucking champion is Korn, because the minions just basically rip and tear it through his army, and just rip on to him. Now, comes down to the head honcho fight, the warp. And I'm going to have a lot of people hating me, but know this. Again, this is my opinion. And this is my idea of what will happen. Ready? It's a 10 to 0 to the Scarlet King. Hey, yo, what the fuck? I, I know, I know. I know you guys are freaking the fuck out and you're going, what the fuck? What do you mean it's a 10 to 1 on the Scarlet King? Well, this is the reason. Remember when I said back then that the Scarlet King even erased an entire idea from a universe in order to destroy it? Well, the warp itself is basically a mirror image of the universe, of the 40k universe. So, with that logic, it has the same properties of it, but extended because what you believe in the Materium also exists in the Immaterium. So, if the Scarlet King basically walks into the warp, feels the energy of it, and figures it out, Korn basically will lose 90% of his power in less than a second, due to the fact that the Scarlet King just needs to snap his fingers and make it so that way violence, blood, 
skulls, anything that the corn will use as power just evaporates into nothingness. You might be saying, oh, this would never work. Uh, it, uh, it has. FYI, I'm using the logic of 40k to defeat 40k. I know, self-logic hurts. But when it came down to the Sisters of Battle during a crisis where they fought Nurgle's forces, they basically made it a thought in their head and repeated it. Nurgle's poison has no effect. Nurgle's poison has no effect. Nurgle's poison has no effect. And they kept playing that in their head over and over and over again. And they defeated Nurgle's forces. Even a great unclean one was banished back to the warp. So with that... What would an interdimensional being that literally has the ability to erase ideas have at his disposal? Well, basically Korn getting his shit rocked. Outside of the Materium, Korn has a chance because their Scarlet King can't reach out onto everything. But in the, materi in the Immaterium, he has the ability to, well, tap into the Materium through it. Basically the same way Korn does. So he has the ability to literally mind control basically everybody and make them say there's no such thing as violence for at least a couple seconds. And with that thought process, guess what? Korn's power goes away for a couple seconds. That's enough time for the Scarlet King to just go in and wipe him out. Now, like I said, this is probably going to get a lot of people butthurt, but this is my opinion. You may hate it, you may dislike it, but with my logic, I'm hoping you understand, well... Yeah, it kind of makes sense. So, yeah, that was it. Leave a comment in the comment section of what you think should fight what from each universe. And I'm going to tell you right now, the next fight... So yeah, next fight's going to be interesting. Who do you think would win? A Plague Primarch or a Plague Doctor? And as always, remember... FOR THE EMPEROR!